So, you know, if you're not a member of a big school, uh, speaking to the audience out there, then you don't know how amazing some of the training camps are before the Worlds or the Pans. And you get to see all these matchups that don't, that would never happen in competition because teammates don't fight each other. Um, for example, at Gracie Baja, I've got to see guys like Roger Gracie and Flavio Almeida fighting and, and Braulio and Marcio Feitosa, all these amazing matchups that, again, you're never going to see out there. And I remember one time I visited uh, your academy and uh, I got to watch you and uh, Joao Assis and Bouchesha and all these monsters going at it. And you were the lightest guy there. <laughs> and uh, you, were, you were leading the training camp because Leo hadn't moved here yet. And uh, man, you were just right in there in the mix. And uh, you, you looked like you belonged right there with the heavyweights. Um, when you have a training camp with those monsters, you must be so confident by the time you walk out on the mats to compete. Is that true? Yes, you know, uh, jiu-jitsu is a very different sport because sometimes the monsters is not the guys that are going to give you the hard problem, you know. That's what's so funny about jiu-jitsu. Sometimes I was doing better with Jackson Bouchesh and then if you put me to roll with him, out, I, uh, <laughs> I want to punch him because I couldn't deal with his guard, you know. So I think it's both sides. Of course, that train with big guys gives me confidence to fight against big guys, you know. I remember, I, I never competed as a heavyweight till 2011. And then one of my friends, Carlos Orlando Esquisito, mm -hmm. I think you know mm -hmm. him, he's a yep. very small guy, super good coach, you know, very good guy, help us a lot, doing a lot of technique. And I remember I was training for Marcelo Mafra Lapella, and he was beating me in the training like every day, like I was not find myself with him and I was, Come back home after the camp. We were training for the World No Gi 2011, and I say, "Come, Carlos, man. I don't know. I gonna f how we gonna deal with these guard players? No Gi, man. Seems like I lose my patience. You know, I lose my patience. I if I go too crazy, I get caught. If I don't do nothing, I'm staying. I don't have too much patience to play this game. You never see me in 150-50 guard. You never see me." I think I never entered 150 50-50 guard in a tournament or double guard. Double guard pull a little bit because, you know, sometimes you want to play on bottle. But I lose my patience. So he said, Lucas, I've been watching you train with the big guys. Why you don't compete as a heavyweight? I say, you crazy, man. I say, Lucas, Lucas, I see you compete uh, training with Bochecha, João. You train good with these guys, better than we train with me and Lapela. So I say, you know what, they're going to try. Then I did the final against Tusa. I beat Tusa in the final. That was my first competition as a heavyweight. Then after that, I started to compete a lot in a heavyweight. And if you, if you like, to this year, I had, I think I had 18 mats, 18 mats. I won 16. I lost two for Shanji and one for Keenan and Guan. Mm -hmm. Keenan was not even a heavyweight. Now he's a heavyweight. But I didn't have the record on, on the middle age. Mm. Even my submissions, if you see my last Pan Ams, three Pan Ams and I've been competing on the heavyweight or even the words, I have more submissions rate on the heavyweight division than in the middle age. Wow. So yeah, so even, okay, you can be a champion all the time, you know, heavy or middle, it's gonna be hard every division, but if you look like how many mats I had as I have and how many I won how many I lost. I have way more winning than losing compared to the middleweight. You know? Right. So it's interesting, but I, that don't mean it's easy to go to a heavyweight, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think I find myself, you know, since I moved to heavyweight, I always in the final, in the same finals of the worlds, Pan Ams, first place or second, always there, you know, I think that means something then my game is maybe it's better for these guys. Yeah, for sure. And it's been funny, sometimes I'll be talking to some of the other commentators and they'll, they'll see your name on the list and they'll say, Lucas Leitch, heavyweight. Oh, that must be a different Lucas because Lucas isn't that big. <laughs> but uh, you know, some people just don't know that you oftentimes compete in higher weight classes. And we've had this conversation before and I've asked you why you do that because uh, it's a pretty rare thing to do. And last time I asked you, you told me that you felt like you had more space yeah. uh, competing against the heavy guys. Is, is that still how you feel? Yeah, I think if you see, not everybody, né, but if you see most of the heavy guys, they like to pass all their life, they like to mm -hmm. 
driving their way. Exactly. And I love to be here in the bottle. Mm -hmm. When you see like lighter weights, like to go to lightweight, ah, leg right. drag going outside, giving me a little bit more harder time, you know? Mm -hmm. So like you guys against Durinho. If you go against one heavyweight, they don't move like that. Right. They won't smash you, you know, but they don't move like, and after five, six minutes, not everybody don't think I'm gonna say, oh, look, I say they have weight. But it's, I think it's, it's, it's biological that the heavy guy, after seven, eight minutes, he doesn't have the same cardio mm -hmm. than a middleweight, especially a lightweight guy, you know? Right. You get two lightweights, they never get tired. You get someone over 200 pounds. They will. After seven minutes, <laughs> yeah, so. How about uh, injuries, though? Because a lot of guys, a lot of smaller guys, will not do the absolute division because they're worried of injury. Do you uh, think that there's a higher there's a higher chance of you getting injured going against the heavier guys? I think so because the training. I think the most of the injury coming from the training, not in actually in the competition. You know, mm -hmm. in my case, you know, I have a couple of injuries, like I told you, with my back and my my hips sometimes, but. You know, I've been training for a lot of heavy guys, Boucher, but I never had an injury like, pow, like something broke, nothing mm -hmm. like that. But of course, it's, you know, a heavy weight is more chance to fall over your knee mm -hmm. and this and that. And, but I don't compete as an ultra heavy, you know. Boucher mm -hmm. always say, oh, why? If you think you like go heavy weight, why you go, you don't go ultra? But ultra is a lot of different from heavy, you know. Mm -hmm. Heavy is like Jackson. Keen and Team Springs, right. Ultra is Cyborg, Bochecha, Trans, right. is different, you know. There's no limit. Yeah, no limit. So, eh, I never get injury that bad to compete as a heavyweight, but eh, of course, and right now because my back, I, I, I want to move a middleweight, but I already know me when I doing the sign up, and I see all the names. I say, you know what, they're gonna have a game. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, it makes it, it's fun to watch. Uh, you fighting that for classes, it's great. So uh, one last question before we move on to the technique portion, and that is um, developing your game. I was training with uh, a brown belt last week, and I was asking him, you know, what, what's your game? What, what, what guard do you like? And his answer was that, I don't know, I'm still trying to figure it out. So for a guy like that, how would you guide him into figuring out what is his game? And for people who don't know what your game means, it's because this is not a game that we're playing, but uh, it means like the techniques that you like and the, the guard that you like uh, or the passing that you like. How would you guide a student into developing his own game? Yeah. It's difficult to uh, what game I'm going to guide then, but it was a good point to talk about the game. You know, I always tell my students or everybody then I have opportunity to teach like how it's important you have a, a, a game then you search on that game sometimes there's a, sometimes one guy have way more jiu-jitsu way more knowledge of jiu-jitsu than another but during the matchup this guy just dominate this guy and then if, if you stop to, to see who knows more technique maybe the another guy know more but you was able to put myself in your game, you know. So let's say you have an amazing close guard. The mat, if you let me pull and put me in the half guard, I can go to your back, stay six minutes on your back, and I, need, I even see your game. That don't mean I'm better than you, but I was able to bring you to my game. Or maybe you jump on the close guard on me, I, I try to open you, ah, I'm bar. I couldn't, you know. That's one I think then Marcelo Garcia show for everyone, you know, that I saw his mats, everybody know what he gonna do, and he's still doing, he's still doing, he's, he's so good to, to make you come into his game, you know, that I think I doing that good too, and that what I think helped me on the heavyweights is the heavyweights let me play my game easier than the middleweights. First middleweight, they jump in the guard right away. Mm. Ah, double guard pull. Normally, 85% of the heavyweight guys, they wanna come on top. Mm -hmm. See, that's why Shanji was smart. He doesn't wanna play on top too much. You see, you have guys, then, but the most of the guys is a heavyweight, they are naturally, if you have a double guard pull, they come up. Yeah. You know, so that I able to play my game. If you fight, if I, fight, if I compete against, against Keenan, 
Maybe he let me pull because now he like, but probably he gonna bring it to his game right away, you know? And then we are gonna be in the double guard pool, then he steal his game. He loved the double. So these, these little things can change the match, you know? Who, who, who is able to, in, to put on his own game, you know? So that's why it's important for the guys not just learn and f a new game or, or building your game for you, but how you how you gonna make he play your game. You mm -hmm. know, if you're able to do in that well, your he results gonna be better and better. Right. And do you think it's a matter of looking at, say, a person saying, "Oh, you have long legs. You'll be you'll be better at spider guard," or "You have short legs. Maybe you should maybe you should try half guard." Do you identify physical characteristics and try to guide a student to a particular guard? little bit. So of course, if the guy have a super long, like Kyron Grace, of course his guard, his close guard is going to be more effective than if you get Leo mm -hmm. <laughs> with his short legs to play a, a, a close guard. But I think that's more naturally on the mat, how you felt, you know. And it, it's not going to be like easy, you know, take time, take two, three years to you develop a game. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think you look for the guy, oh, you're gonna be a spider game. Maybe he doesn't like spend all the energy on the grips, you know. Yeah. That was my, my problem with the spider guard. I, I love spider guard, I love watch and study, play a little bit for my students. But always when I do it, we on the high level, I don't know, I spend, it seems like I spend a lot of energy on my grips. Mm -hmm. But same, th same thing if you get someone then uh, spider guard, especially like Michael Lang, mm -hmm. Probably he's gonna say, oh, I don't know, if someone put me in the half guard, he smashed my face, I can't, you know, mm. we never know, you know. That's why by training and competes and drilling and your experience is gonna mold your game. Right, and I, and I think that's one thing that's great about jiu-jitsu is that we can have totally different games and it's okay. And you know, yes. we can do what we like to do. But when we compete, who's able to put on your own game before, mm -hmm. for sure is gonna start with uh, two, three steps forward than another guy. Great words, Lucas. Lucas, thanks so much for the talk. Oh, that was thank awesome. You. <laughs> now let's move on to the techniques. Hey guys, welcome back to This Week in BJJ. Again, my guest is world champion Lucas Leitch. Lucas, thanks again for being on the show. Thank you. So you are very well known for your half guard. You have a unique way of doing it. I've felt it before, it's amazing. And uh, I'd like to ask you to share a little bit with us today. Yes. I'm gonna show uh, the, the, the easy and the best way to understand the concept of my position. And of course, you have a lot of different details and different grips when the guy counter one side or another. But I think by all these years teaching that position and doing the seminars, the best way for the guys to understand how it works in the knee trap is, coming, is, is from this position. All right, let's do it. So we're already going to start you here on the knee shield position. You know, I was talking with them. Sometimes I lock my foot here, especially when I know the guy like pass outside. Just for he don't pass, you know, I want to control him. But sometimes I also, if he put too much pressure, I open. So it doesn't, doesn't mean like you need to be here or here. It's a, it's a balance, you know? It's a case by case scenario. Case by case. What is very important, you guys understand, I don't like giving my, it's almost like an MMA here. Go punch me. Go block, underhook. That's why you see a lot of guys doing that to an MMA, like Damian my Block, underhook, okay? And same thing for Jiu-Jitsu. I can, sometimes I use my two try hold here. I try defend, and if he hold, I break. So I always defend that, okay? Now I'm gonna create the space with my leg to sit up, it's a basic sit up, but look the noise of my hand, okay? I don't do a lazy under hook here, lazy under hook. Look, my shoulder, more important than my hand is my shoulder. Uh. Uh, see my shoulder and then after I involve his hip doesn't worry about the grip think about no gi I need to hold his hip his waist yes because you see I can't have I can't find his ankle from here but when I bring him I find and when I find I bring his ankle to my butt so 
coming outside. That's the first position I want to show. Keeping his legs between my legs. A good drill here for see if you understand the position. I always tell my students, right now for you learn the game, don't worry about the sweep. Worry about get here and control from here. Try escape your leg. Sometimes I even hold it here more like a no gi. Try escape. Yeah. So then from here, we're going to sweep that way. Or inside. When I go inside, I don't turn him like that. See my foot, I step on the mat, I bring my foot to my butt, and I enter my hip. I like this position because when I sweep, try recover. Control the hips here. And now it's gonna be, the mat's gonna be mine. I'm gonna stay here. Sometimes I let it turn. Boom. But work the back attack. Okay, so one, one sweep make me win the match because I land, I land in a better spot. Let's go again. Defend this arm. Sit up. Right now, keep the shield. It's better. For we understand the basic. Keep the shield. It's not here. Keep the shield. Bring it in a little bit for the creative space. You see how I open my hip? For my ankle, find his ankle. Now I slide one another hook, and very important, I bring my ankle to my butt, create the knee pressure here. Don't worry about take your foot out, just worry about your knee coming here for you see. See a lot of guys are worried to take the foot, just worry about open the knee and I'm natural in this position. Squeeze, try escape. So one, come back, see how, what I'm doing here with his ankle when I take him down, like a gluteal, te gluteal workout, mm -hmm. see, mm. same thing here, pass on the other side, control the hip, or come back again on the dog fight, you call dog fight, yeah, a lot of times when I want to test position, he put his weight, and then I switch to the other. Put my foot. Huh. Huh. Mm -hmm. One more time. I'm fast. Bring. See how I bring in my legs? <clears throat> Try escape. I can go straight from here. Hmm. Control the hip in here. I just want to point out one small detail that, uh, that Lucas is doing from the beginning. When you sit up and get the underhook, when you sit up, here he's still very, he has good uh, balance and base here. Even if I'm driving into him, it's going to be hard to topple him over. So. And also, if you try the choke, you need to show the metal here. Okay? And also, coming outside if you try the choke. You know? It's a, you need to watch out with the choke, but at the same time, when you have confidence, then you don't, you know where his hand is. I use that to get the sweep. But don't forget about Tight choke, go around. You finish, and then you block here. Try choke. And then keep patient here. Exhaustion. Okay. And these uh, sweeps that Lucas showed today, other people show them as well. They're you know not super rare. But the very unique thing that Lucas is doing is the footwork, the torquing the knee. Yes. And, uh, you know, here I can pretty I'm pretty balanced, but when my knee is torqued out like this, I lose all yeah. balance. That is the important here. To switch the hook. Mm -hmm. outside. If you don't have the reason, I start. Yes. Push you forward to attack the back. Right. 
So we didn't really talk about that, but um, of course it's a natural reaction for the guy on top whenever someone gets an underhook to get the wizard. So one more time, just without the wizard. If he doesn't have the wizard, I already have one hook here on the back. Okay. And that's already making me enter on the next position. But right now, look the difference. I'm gonna underhook, I'm gonna switch, but instead I go outside now, I come straight inside. It's just a different option to hit the sweep. So let me show here again. So from the same spot, I can go straight to the outside, or because I already have the ankle wrap here, I can come in straight inside. And then is when I need to use the hips. Okay? And that position make you post a lot of times again. If it is an arm here. Yes. So now we go to the third position, then it's going to the back. That's the a little bit harder to understand, but I think everybody can do it. Once I'm here, he, he let go the wizard yet. He already let go the, the wizard. So I keep the pressure once I go in sweep, but look here my leg. I bring my leg inside, and now I swing it to the back and push the back, escaping my hip. So I have the back control. One more time. And why sometimes I choice go inside and outside? Because sometimes it puts a lot of weight. I can't go outside, so I come inside. But I come with the knee torque. Come back a little bit, I'm gonna put. You see that? Mm -hmm. So I have the sweep. And if you post, yes. I keep as I go into the sweep, so I, I can't do it from here. I stretch my hip. Sometimes I can even put my arm here on his armpit. So step, Good. escape the hip. So Lucas, thanks so much for uh, sharing your techniques with us oh, today. Thank you, my friend. Uh, if people want to learn more about you or your upcoming seminars, where can they find out? You can find out on my website, lucaslate.com, and on the Facebook, Instagram. And if someone is interested in doing a seminar, just send me a message on Facebook, Lucas Leite BJJ. And that's it. And your academy is in La Habra, California? Yeah, my academy is like 20 minutes from here, La Habra, California. I'm already there for the last five years. A lot of guys passed, even Mendes, Andre Galvão already training there back on the Brazil days, Hobart. So, yes, anyone that want to visit me in La Habra, California, anytime. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Lucas. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching this week in BJJ. Thanks again, guys, for watching this episode of This Week in BJJ. Again, if you have some time to spare, be sure to check out the replay of Respect 2 and the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam Los Angeles, both great events available right here on BudoVideos.com. We'll be back next week with another episode, but if you're enjoying the show, please click on the like button, the subscribe, leave a comment. We appreciate all that stuff. Okay, guys, see you next time on This Week in BJJ.